Day one of the world playoffs. I'm DJ Wheat here with Rachel. And guess what? We've got another amazing game coming up here. We are live from sunny Los Angeles here at LA Live, and it is gorgeous out. It's a beautiful time, a beautiful day for some League of Legends. Our next match is Europe's SK Gaming against Korea's Azubu Frost. It's been a long road for Frost. Let's take a look at what they went through to get here. Korea, home to some of the most dedicated fans in the League of Legends community and arguably the most competitive esports teams in the world. Two teams will represent the region here at the Season 2 World Championship, although it's not the two teams most people predicted would qualify. Azubu Frost's strong start to Season 2 set up their qualifying chance at OGN's The Champions Final, where they squared off against one of Europe's top teams, CLG EU. After falling behind 0-2 in the best of five series, a determined Azubu Frost turned it around, winning the next two games in a row. In the blind pick fifth game, they dominated CLG EU to secure the win, giving them enough qualifying points to advance on to Los Angeles. At the Season 2 Korean Regional Finals, all eyes were on heavy favorites Azubu Blaze, as many thought they would join their brother team at the World Championship. But Najin Sword, led by Mac Noon, shocked the world and defeated Blaze 3-2 in the best of five series. The upset moved Najin Sword on to the Season 2 World Championship and left Azubu Blaze on the outside looking in. Azubu Frost and Najin Sword will now look to put all arguments to rest and prove once and for all that the best teams in the world come from Korea. Now playing as the red team. You've watched them dominate up on stage once already today. Let's hear it for Azubu Frost. Germany and Spain. Give it up for one of Europe's most popular teams playing as the blue team. It's SK Gaming! First up on support, we have Nif. The AD carry for the team. Give it up for Yellow Star. The AP carry, you know him, Ocelot. And in the jungle, we've got Arane. And last up in the top lane, it's Kevin. And if you guys are ready, let's kick it over to our casters here for this match. Give it up for D-Man and Jet. Thanks, guys. I'm Joshua Jet Leesman, and here with Lee D-Man Smith. Yeah, oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be here at Season 2 World Finals, you know? People said it wasn't going to happen, but it was. It was always going to happen. Gonna happen. I was right? always coming here. Uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, wow, SK game of Azubu Frost. We saw Azubu Frost this morning against IG already, and what a fantastic match it was. Just, it was incredible. I mean, IG started off super strong, but Azubu Frost showed it again, didn't they? They showed it in the OGN finals. They came back. And it's going to be really scary here for SK because we saw how well Invictus Gaming did against CLG in the yeah. last game, and Frost even though it was a very close game, beat them somewhat handily in the end there. So, man, SK really has to bring their A game into this very first game. So this is really, really exciting this for is, me. This is scary stuff for them. Yeah. I mean, because we were watching that game and we were just saying, you know what, we think Frost have got this in the late game, but there was such a back and forth match. You know, IG are so strong. So IG are sat one and one, and Zubu Frost have one and zero. SK Gaming have, you know, have had the advantage to sit and watch these teams play. You know, they've got a bit of an advantage in that way, but these teams are damn good. 
And even SK, people have been counting them out ever since the European regionals. They went on and destroyed COG EU in that tournament. So every time people count SK out, they seem to come back again. They have so much emotion. You saw just in the back, they did the scream on this. And this is just going to be awesome. Yeah, absolutely awesome. So we had a chance to sit down with the players about competing in these playoffs. You know, it's such a grand occasion. Let's have a look at what they had to say. SK 게이밍 정말 잘 알고 있고요. 경기 정말 많이 챙겨봤고. We need all of us to step up our game. Maybe not step up our our game, but play like we did in the boot camp. And everything's gonna be all good. We have to win too, but we are going to win three. SK 팀이랑 할 때는 아무래도 SK가 굉장히 게임을 즐기면서 하는 게 느껴지더라고요. 특히 오셀로 선수의 세레모니라던가. 저희도 같이 즐기면서 이 게임 내에서 겨뤄볼 생각입니다. Think our chances are pretty good. They are really high. Um, I think we will probably go into the final. We will go through. All of us are playing lately extremely well, and we are in a good shape and ready to rock. He is ready to rock. That's what oh, I like. He is always ready to rock. So, I mean, we've seen the, what they've got to say for this. Let's have a look at the keys to the game for this match. SK Gaming coming into this one, you know, as really people weren't expecting them to get second place in Europe, but they did. And a lot of it went down to their emotions. They are the most emotional team in this tournament. And the very first key there is just to let those emotions flow. Let them take over. They have to play with the passion that they have always come with. And when Ocelot's screaming, when RNA's screaming, and they're going in for those team fights and coming out on top, that's when they're at their best. Yeah, that's how they were made popular. I mean, when we were in Poland, people were saying, oh, Eski are about to get a kill. They can hear them before they, they saw it. hear them on stream. There was no mics on Ocelot, by the way. He was 100 <laughs> feet away from the caster booth, and we could hear him scream. Yeah, and of course, they've got to match the aggression of Frost. We saw it earlier on, the crazy play they have. And that's what SK does when they're at their best, too. Ocelot flashes into team fights, much like the Korean teams. So... SK's never been good playing defensively. Yeah. They can't let Frost take it over. They have to take it to them. Yeah, and of course, speaking of Ocelot, you know, there's, a, there's the new team that's melded together. They've only been together, which it's probably, what, two months now? You know, the fact that Yellowstar came in there, mm -hmm. Araneas took pressure off them. They've helped Ocelot get involved. When SK wasn't working, it was because he was almost trying to do too much. What they've done with Kevin in the top lane being there for so long, Yellowstar in the bottom lane, Arne in the jungle, they have support around him so they can get him going. They can let him get rolling. And when he gets rolling with all that emotion, they win games. Absolutely. Well, we've seen what SK have got to do. Let's have a look at what Azubu Frost have got to do. We saw them earlier on to this morning. If you, you missed that game, you missed a corking opening to this series. First of all, though, Jat, they've got to control the pace. And that's what they did when they took control of that IG game. They were getting pushed around a little bit early, but they won the 4v5 team fights. They took that Baron steal, and then later in the game, they just took the Baron without even fighting for it. So they can take control of the game, and they can push. And that bottom lane with Woom and Mad Life is the core of that team. When they were down in the OGN Season 2 Finals, it was the bottom lane that brought them back. There was a support Lux ban that got drawn out in the first game against IG. It's really, really key. They have to take that lane. Yeah, and we saw how much IG were focusing on Woong, actually, earlier on in that first game. Everything they were really, was trying to go everything on. Everything was on Woong. Got himself caught in a few positions. But, you know, we talk about that, but the jungler, Cloud Templar, has got to get himself in there. And the last thing, if they can disrupt Ocelot and Arane with all their emotion, they're the two screamers on that team. Yeah. If they start getting them on tilt, if they kill Ocelot early, if they shut down RNA's jungle, that's not going to translate well into SK's motto got to get those guys out of the game if they want to take a quick win. They do have to get them going. I mean, these teams, we, they're, they're, we, we talk about the emotions of SK. You know, god damn, if they lose this game, they were going to get down themselves. If they win it, they are going to be hyper. And you guys at home are going to see it on the camera because these guys can scream. If, you know, the North American scene's probably not really seen SK in full flow apart from when they were IEM New York. Probably but not. nevertheless, we are going to get in towards Champion Select, so let's see what these guys are going to do. Will IG leave everything open? You know, uh, uh, Azubu Frost, they, they got the free picks against right. IG. Are against SK IG, IG just let them have yeah. a lot of those things and almost took them out. Whether SK's decided against wow, that or these not, bands are fast. they have prepared for these bans because now in Champions like four bans going out already. The Ezreal ban, not letting that get through. Azubu Frost actually got the Ezreal with the first pick. Since they don't have first pick in this game, they made sure to get rid of it. And yeah, just and in, back and forth, these guys And already. interestingly enough, you know, I think both teams maybe want to leave Alistair open. I'm not too sure how much Azuka Frost have researched SK again, because if Alistair's left open, SK will pick it first. Arane absolutely. absolutely loves that champion. Jax being bound out there, definitely an interesting one. We saw it in game one, you know, we saw how strong Shy was on that one.
So just the bans going out very early. Skarner ban is just something SK doesn't want to get taken to them. Skarner's something that he initiates. He's someone who takes it to the other team. They wanted to block that off right away. Other oh, bans very one. targeted here. That Oriana ban yeah. at Ocelot, that is what he was keying with. But here we go, Alster on the table. If SK doesn't take it here, they're giving it to Azubu Frost. They're basically saying Mad Life have it. it up right away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Oriana, I mean, that was a, a given. That shows that they've watched the EU regionals, they've practiced, and they've checked out SK Game, and they've done the research. I mean, that's a Korean team. Of course they've done the research. They are, they are the kings of esports, and they'll be expecting this one. So 30 seconds to go on the timer. I'm expecting Kevin to lock in Alistair here. Surprising amount if of discussion If they didn't take here, Alistair, actually. who do you think they would go for? Right now, Alistair is know. by far the safest pick. Yeah. If they didn't want that, they'd go with something like Sona. They'd try to pick just a generic, safe, really good support, and then try to mix it up elsewhere. But, you know, there we go. Alistair right away. Yeah, so it was kind of expected, and it, it was, it was a, it's a pick. It's Aranea is one of his favorite champions that are in there. We expected it, and Mad Life would almost certainly have taken it. We are seeing Shen coming in. We saw Shen in the jungle before. Very strong pick. And this is something, in the previous tournament, Shen was banned almost, I'd say, 90% yeah. of the time, but he's been getting through here, and teams are ready to deal with him. They think they know how to take fights to teams. They're not as worried about the split pushing, but in all of that, Shen's done quite well in these last two games. Jungle Shen last time for Cloud Templar, just the general of the team, Shen ulting in aggressively on top of Jax a few times. That's kind of like how they like to play that. The great thing about this, though, is even though Cloud Templar played in the jungle, he can go top lane as well. He can go top lane, he can go anywhere he pleases. Uh, he's not quite Mundo though. <laughs> uh, we're just waiting for the final pick to come in from then. It will be Corky. That's interesting because Graves is open and Goomwong is choosing to go Corky rather than Graves. That is interesting. He must just have the favoritism on there or he thinks that the Corky matches up better with Graves and he'd win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. So much of these AD carries have been the big three. We've seen yeah. Ezreal, Corky, and Graves. Ezreal kind of emerged as the champion of that group and everyone started prioritizing him, now banning him out. Absolutely. So there's just the two left. If these teams want to switch from that a little bit, something like Sivir does work very well against mm -hmm. Corky, but I just don't know if Yellowstar is going to bring that out. Also, Kog'Maw, any of these things that aren't part of the big three are still really strong. I'd be excited to see him come out. You know, it's just dawned on me, the Twisted Fate being banned out there. That was one of the super secret champions that Ocelot had tucked away for EU Regionals that we began talking about. That shows they really, really have listened to what we were saying. Wow. Wow, somebody does. Somebody, somebody has to listening. listen to what I say. It is going to be Aurelia looking like Kevin, of course, our Aurelia at the EU Regionals. He just made that dance around the top. Going to switch it possibly to Graves. We talked about the fact that he's open. I expect Aurelia to be picked in there later on. There he is, locked in straight away. So Aurelia going to be on Kevin on that top lane and Sona down the bottom nib. And there's something interesting here. The Korean teams have said Nunu is not a strong pick in, in their yes. meta. They just do not like him. Normally they do prioritize the Sona pick, so SK taking that away right now, instead of you know taking Nunu and trying to go up against the poke heavy Sona, really actually blocks the Nunu pick entirely. Not only does Azubu Frost not value him as a strong pick, but also Sona's a really good high poke counter to Nunu, so they couldn't run it even if they were just kind of playing it, saying he's weak just to hope to get it. So what are we expecting to go alongside Koki in that bottom lane? Will it be a Janna? I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised I'm, at the I'm time to think these guys are taking because normally these picks are just rocketing back and forth, but these guys really wanting all this. If they go support Lux, that would be really entertaining and exciting because he played a bunch of that. Well, we saw they IG banning Lux in the finals and it was game. banned as well. He yeah. walked banned in the first game, so IG obviously realized there is something in there that Azubu Frost have in the pocket. Well, Singed, could we see Singed? I mean, Dyrus is here watching. He'll be happy with that one, surely. <laughs> That's really exciting. And it is locked in. It is going to be Lux. Is that going to be Lux support or Lux mid, though? They that, still have the versatility here. That's actually really good because this is going to depend on what Ocelot picks for his mid lane here because we know Kevin's playing Aurelia. We know Yellowstar and Nifra bottom lane on support. We know the, the Alistair pick. Ocelot has to now pick against blindly. Normally, it's just... Yeah, he's got no choice. I no, mean, no choice. They may have picked their soul lanes. If it's anything for him, he's okay. played a lot of Anivia. Kassadin is available. And Kassadin's available, but I think it's too dangerous to pick Kassadin here with the counter picks. If I had to guess, Do which I guess? I guess we have time, I would say... I was going to say Anivia, but he might just go for Karthus here. Of course, Karthus being available, you know, he's heavily banned in the European scene, certainly with Frog in, in the action. It's definitely something I, we've seen also playing Karthus, but we don't see it that often. He's normally not his go-to champion. Yeah. It's interesting because he does like to flash in a lot on something like Morgana. He can do the same strategy with Karthus. He lands a good wall. He could flash in with his Defile on and try to take them out. 
This is still very interesting though because something like Singed, if it gets going in this game, he's going to be able to run a mock around Karthus and just flip him where he pleases for the most part. <laughs> and speaking of Anivia, we might see that coming up against Karthus. That's a really good matchup for Anivia. We could see it. And um, we've talked about it. Rapid Star talked about you know his matchup against Frog in, in the OGM finals. You know how he thought he matched him pace for pace. And it's no surprise that Anivia would get picked up here. You know, it's one of those champions that everybody always talks about. He can stall the game out very strong for a late game, which is a definite possibility for uh, Zubu Frosty, you know, the late game would certainly suit a singed. And Rapid Star also has huge, huge respect for Frog, and as well as saying he matched yeah. up for him, so it would make sense that he's learned his Anivia, tried to replicate what Frog can do, and really just learned all the tricks of the trade here. If this is going to be the lock-in, we get to see that support Lux that was banned out in the first game for Zubu Frost, and we get to see why it's so feared. We get to see why it's so feared. And you know, you could think of it. I mean, it's a youth search champion. He's got a great slow. You've obviously got the uh, the Pew Pew Laser, which you've renamed lately to, uh, you know, Much Avail, Final I guess. You could, I, I'm not too sure. You know, there, there was it was a mixed feelings we'll on the rename of that one. It is going to get locked in. It is going to be a Nivri in that mid versus Karthus. So Ocelot is going to be well prepared for this one. He's played Froggen a lot of times, just as much as Rapid Star in that mid lane, especially as an interview. These lanes are going to be really interesting. The Ocelot Rapid Star matchup, as you say, tough, tough matchup for Ocelot. He really has to play and get support from RNA because Anivia normally could just bully up on Karthus, but with the Alistair presence, he might be able to come in from that lane. Really, just getting the jungle Alistair gives them the early game lane advantage, almost regardless of the picks, because of the presence that Alistair can add into this game from the jungle. Something would have to happen level one to try to shut that down, but early on, all the lanes are going to be in SK's favor just because of that presence. Yeah, so until the uh, summoner spells do get locked in, we will not announce them. I mean, obviously the players can't really hear what we're saying, but they can't see them until the game loads. So it's only fair that we save those things until the game is actually underway. You guys can see them on your screen, so it's all good. So uh, what are you, you going to go with on this one? I mean, we, we're seeing the two teams setting up here. We've got a bit of global presence. We've got the Castle Salty. We've got the Shen Alty. Could come in from any angle. Which way are you going to swing on this one? So much of this, I think, is just Azubu Frost and their team fight presence in a yeah. lot of ways. Because support Lux, as fearful as it is, really shines in team fights. The shield that comes out is vastly underestimated, and especially that there's no high amounts of burst damage coming out from SK, the spam W shields are going to be absolutely crazy in team fights. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the first two times these teams have ever met. SK have never met Azubu Frost. They've never played a Korean team. And I don't think a Korean team has ever played SK gaming. I mean, there's no other team that's ever gone in that way. I'm trying to think, obviously, back to Counter-Strike. There's probably something probably in there. Gonzalo but anyway, ladies Gonzalo and gentlemen, if you want to see Azubu Frost take 2-0, take in SK gaming, give them a cheer. Now, if you guys want to see SK gaming take the first game out of this set and just give themselves a good emotional start, let's hear it for SK. Okay, so it sounded like the uh, SK Gaming seems to be the crowd favorite. There you go. Just waiting for things to get underway. And honestly, which way, which way are you really going to swing with this one? I mean, you kind of sat on the fence with that one. Are you thinking Azubu Frost? We saw them earlier on against IG. They were fantastic. But SK right. Gaming, the European team, coming into this one, they absolutely outshone CLG EU in the regionals. You know, it was a different SK Gaming. We were not used to seeing that. They showed glimmers of potential while we were at ECT Poland. They obviously went 2-1 versus CLG. They top them mm -hmm. but when it came against Moscow 5 they kind of folded so which team are we going to see today so much of SK gaming is about growth I mean even near the end of season 2 they were still a very fresh team and you saw all of their potential when they beat SK but then they went to the finals and just kind of fell flat on their face I feel they may Moscow. have parted a little bit the day before they may you have parted a little bit right they, they were had all the they're relief. in season 3 they're here in LA I mean what a fantastic feeling that's got to be as a player I mean as yourself as a player how goddamn good would it be to be here right now it's absolutely incredible. This is the Super Bowl of League it of Legends is. in a lot of ways. This is the grandiose finals. This is the biggest tournament I've ever seen in North America. In North America. For esports, easily. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's a bold statement. I'm trying to think of other North American tournaments, but that's, that's definitely out there. I mean, yeah. we're sat in this massive, massive lighting rig that's been set up here. The, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the, the, the crew that set this thing up, this is the biggest lighting crew, L crew. A rig that LA Live has ever had in the history of LA Live. This is a pretty damn big thing. Uh, you guys at home that are watching, sucks to be you, don't it, really? I mean, you're not here watching it, I've got to be honest. But, you know, all credit to the crew that set this thing up. It is absolutely crazy as the fans give it their all here. Yeah. Wow, this is just an amazing setup. Looking at these team comps a little bit more, though, 
The matchup in the top lane is going to be very, very interesting. Kevin has Teleport on Aurelia, and Sinich is just Ghost and Ignite. So this is actually all going to be about Shy just trying to split push, trying to pressure, and then trying to make 4v5s out of the rest of the map. Shen's going to be the roaming guy who can make two in one spot or four in the other, and he's really just going to be farming his jungle. That's the strength of him. Yeah, so I really like Azubu Frost chances and all effectively, this, Effectively, we're going to see, probably Aronair diving down the bottom, we're going to see... Uh, Kevin going down because he's going to have to match Shen because Shen's going to ulti in there. He's going to have to teleport down. The question is, can mm -hmm. Shy interrupt him? Can he get that flip on him? Can he get the poison out? Anything to interrupt that teleport. We're going to see Ocelot popping that ultimate coming off as well. So it's effectively going to be a five on four, possibly down that bottom lane. It's potentially SK's chance to jump out at them. Is just... it's, it's, tr it's tough though, though, because Kevin has that teleport to counteract the Shen ult, and mm -hmm. they're going to fight against each other. So unless he comes down there before Shen's level 6, he's not going to be able to do much. And if he does go down there before level 6, that's going to give Shen the free farm, or sorry, Singe the free farm up top. And when he gets back there, it's not going to be friendly. If Singe gets his ult before Aureli, he's going to completely crush that lane. Yeah, but th the good thing is, as Aureli, he's going to really be able to bully that top lane. It's true, at least early, until Shen yeah. gets his ultimate. It's just... Oh man, these matchups... So I many can't... possibilities. Your I can see your mind is actually blown right now. <laughs> it's trying to cycle through all You're trying to quick. cycle through it. It is our first game of the day. And what some great games we've had today. I mean, our IG beating CLG NA, that's, that's in this group. So that's I mean, in itself opening things up. We're going to see CLG NA versus SK Gaming after this match. So, you know, if SK can go into that one with a high, CLG obviously going to be down mm -hmm. on themselves. The fact that they surrendered before they lost an inhibitor is a pretty big deal. CLG has to win the next game after this. And it's going to be up against SK when we finish up. That, that is actually going to be a very deciding game, I think, for both of those teams. Absolutely. I think the loser of the SKCOG team is going to have game is going to have a really hard time making out of the group. Well, they could potentially go into it both 0-1. They could. That's the assuming that Azubu yeah. Frost are currently the favorites in the group. You know, they beat IG, who have beaten CLG. So I guess it's safe to say we think Azubu Frost, the OGN champions, are now the favorites in this group. Could they go 3-0? I mean, SK Gaming are going to do their best to stop them right now. Could they go 3-0? I think they, they have a very good chance of going 3-0, actually. If you look back just at Azubu Frost history, they've been down and they've been up. They were the A-team for MIG mm -hmm. even back in OGN Season 1, and they got 3-0'd in the finals by their sister team, uh, Blaze, actually. They lost Loco Doco, moved Woong to AD Carry, picked up Shy, and then they were really kind of the B-team for the whole rest of that season until they beat... Blaze again in the semifinals, flipped the tables, won the finals against COGEU, and really did just kind of back on top, really confident, and we haven't really seen them lose. Yeah, and the, and the European viewers and the American viewers may not have seen them too much. I mean, when OGN is on, in, mm -hmm. a, in American time, it's, it's four like... four or five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, so you guys don't get to see it. Me as a European, we get to watch that. It's usually on around about lunchtime. You know, we've seen it, but the English viewing crowd probably has not seen a great deal of the Korean teams, the Chinese teams and certainly the Taipei Assassins and uh, Saigon Jokers that are here. So right. They probably wouldn't have seen a great deal from them. So they are having their eyes open to them right now. I mean, Azubu IG, the first game of the day was, was wild. There was so much unconventional stuff, even just the Valkyrie Jarvan pick. level one. The Valkyrie level one, but just the Jarvan pick in general is something yeah. we haven't seen much of in North America. People say he's good. They play him in solo queue, but no one brought them out in the tournaments. And Swain, also both on the same team comp, and they really took it to him. That level one which, speaking of, is going to be something we see a lot more of this tournament. We were talking with a lot of the other mm -hmm. players. I know Crepo from COGU was saying so much in this tournament is going to be decided at level 1 because you can only do so many things at level 1. So much of it is about surprise, and so much of it is about just catching the other team off guard. These teams have months and months of rehearsed level 1 strategies that they've been hiding because so much can swing with these early things. And that Valkyrie Jarvan thing is a great example of what happened. Yeah, which is an interesting thing because from a European perspective, we're so used to not seeing level one fights. But like, like Repo said, you, know, you cannot give it up. You cannot just let them take your, your buffs. I mean, we saw it at the, the very first game of the day that went straight in. That level one fight from IG forced the red buff. They stole that red buff straight away from uh, Cloud Templar. But you know what? They got themselves back in that game. They had the late game comp. The question is, late game comps. What are we looking at here? We've got uh, Singed is going to get very strong late game. Anivio is always strong late game. Shen's definitely going to get stronger and stronger. Lux may even get stronger late game. This game is potentially going to stretch just because we have Anivia. Mm -hmm. If Frocken taught us anything, it's that Anivia <laughs> knows how to stall <laughs> these games. And it's just going to be a matter, actually, whenever you have a Singed on a team, the things that can shut him down aren't really the AP damage, it's the AD carry. So if Yellowstar can get fed up here and Shy can get going, we see the big cheer going out, good stuff can happen.
good stuff can happen. Uh, uh, sorry, I got, I got distracted you, by the crowd. You got completely distracted, but when we're talking about Carthus, Carthus and Aurelio are definitely strong late game champs. Uh, Caitlyn, we're seeing a return. Caitlyn, we've not seen in a tournament as an AD carry for quite some time. We haven't, but that's the big thing. We were talking about the big three and how one mm -hmm. of them could get broken out. Graves was available, but they decided, no, we're not going with that. Caitlyn should and sh should be able to outlane Corky on Womb just because of the range, because of the poke combined with Sona. Sona's got one of the longest harassment, harassment ranges in the game with her Q. Caitlyn has the longest auto attack range of anyone in the game. And Corky's there sitting at 550. Lux has absolutely no sustain, so they're going to be able to punish that lane if they decide to play aggressively. And now I'm looking at the two team setups. I've got to be honest, I think Azubu Frost have got such a strong level one team fight right now. I mean, they've got the stun, they've got the flip, they've got the taunt, they've got the prison. They've just got so much in there that they could possibly use and just disrupt someone. I mean, if, say, for example, uh, Yellowstar or Ocelot, or even, even Nif, for example, got caught out, they would definitely absolutely get destroyed. And so much of this can happen. We've seen some sneaky level one cues. They can just, they, everything would lead off with the Nivy Q, right? Or the Lux. If they can shoot around corners, get behind things, just pop them off, then obviously so much of it can follow up, as you were saying. Yeah, apologies if you notice yeah. I'm looking around. So I'm looking to see what the disruption is. At the moment, the sun, being that we're in an outdoor arena, is actually shining across, and something's catching the player's eyes. So you can see, you can just about see, if you look on the right-hand side, you can see there's a beam of light coming right down. It's actually catching, I think it's, it's is it shy screen? It looks like it's on the shy screen to me. Looks like it's catching straight through. So that's the current right. problem we've got at the moment. So they're trying to sort that out. So apologies for the delays, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys at home, you know, we are sat in what beautiful... What are we waffling on about? We are, we're we're in beautiful sun in L.A. So, you know, what can I say? The, these outdoor events, this is the problem you get. The sun shines always in L.A., apparently. I've, I've been here since Monday, and I've got to be honest, as an Englishman, it's a pretty warm town. Yeah, and I mean, I've been here February, and it's rained twice, <laughs> if I can remember. So. As a Canadian as well. Yeah. I mean, do I call you a Canadian or American? I mean, am I bringing up some dodgy ground here with WCG? I'm not sure. I think it's, I think it's all been smoothed over at this point. I'm very much a dual citizen. America is homeland as well as Canada. Anyone so that's aware good. of Scumbag Crepo will be well aware. Scumbag Crepo, Scumbag Jet. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with that. I, I, I mean, like it, the fact that while we were in the, the offices earlier on with you, the, the Riot staff even call you Scumbag Jet. It happens from time to time. <laughs> it's a very easily catch-onable term. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, once, once these guys sort themselves out, we're getting ready to go. I mean, let's talk about the rest of the tournament. There's a lot of games right. to play today. I mean, the, this, there's, a, there's a lot of games to play today. This is, is going to be the third game of the day. There's 12 games to play in total, at so least. 10 more games to go at the very least. If we don't have a crazy draw situation, we could be here legitimately till 1 a.m. So I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. I mean, the production crew behind the scenes probably are saying, don't say that, don't jinx it, don't do it, but it could happen. It could happen, and it would be crazy because everyone would just get to see more League of Legends. The best teams would go through. We want to see the highest tier of competition, which is yeah. what we've already seen from these teams. Mm -hmm. The first game was honestly such an amazing way to kick out this, to just kick off the tournament. Even going on to the next group, Still got COG EU to come, who we haven't seen. This is our first game of seeing SK Gaming. We're going to see Dignitas, who say they have some pretty secret strategies wrapped up. Well, apparently so. Revolutionize you know, the revolutionize. game. Revolutionize. I'll, I'll TSM, it, you know, TSM are talking big as well, you know, as you'd expect. Reginald is TSM talking big. big yeah. They always talk big. The American teams are talking very big, but look at that. The sun's shining on your screen. You can see it out there. It is a, a beautiful sunny day here in L.A. It's, uh, it's great to be sat in League of Legends in the sunshine. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. This venue itself is pretty damn awesome. Uh, you know, we talked about the lighting rig, but the LL Live itself, you know, we've got the Staples Center right behind us. We've got a massive arena there as well. I mean, we're just, there's just everything a player could want here. I Other than look, sunshine. I'm not too sure if players want sunshine. <laughs> I just look at how far esports has come, even since I just started showcasting. Yeah, it was, since you were a player. Even since I was a player, right? The events have only gotten bigger and bigger. I mm -hmm. remember doing my first big shoutcast thing with you during Kings of Europe in my house, in my room, at closing the door, hoping like no one interrupts me or knocks on it, waking up at 5 a.m. And now we have this, which is broadcasted to potentially millions of people that are going to tune in over the weekend. Absolutely millions. I mean, we're going to have thousands of people here. Next week, we're going to be in the Galen Center with 10,000 people. There's $2 million on the line. It's just, it grew so fast. It's breathtaking. Like, it's and crazy. it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to throw too much out there, but it's only going to get bigger. There we go. Yeah. 
I mean, this, this, is, this, is, this is a big event. I mean, let's talk about, you know, as you as a player, you're talking about, you know, when you came into it, you went obviously over to Korea, you went to WCG. Um, we've got roles reversed effectively here for the Koreans. They're coming over to America. The nerves that these guys must be feeling here in the sunshine. Ooh. The nerves are actually way more than you would think. You see so much people have those hand warmers out before mm -hmm. the game, and it's just actually, sure, it's not cold here, but I'm sure some of these guys' hands are cold because the anxiety gets to you. And you get kind of that fight or flight response where the blood just leaves your hands. Yeah, and your, the adrenaline. Your, your hands are just freezing after the game. And that happened to me all the time. It's, one, like, it, it's a really, really hard thing to deal with. You have to calm yourself down. You have to simulate these scenarios. And at least for these guys, they've played so much on land. At least Ocelot, he's been in it since season one. Azubu Frost in Korea, they play on land all the time he, during the season. He played Warcraft before there. He was a, he so was these teams are probably ready for this. this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Froggen talked about it as well, you know, how much he likes uh, a warm environment. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all we right. are back underway. Finally, it is going to be a Zubu Frost versus SK Gaming. We talked about that level one fight. Will it happen? We will find out, that's for sure. Check out the screen at the moment. Jan, I mean, from a level one point of view, I said myself, a Zubu Frost definitely have the level, stronger level one fight. They have the stronger level one fight if they want to go for it, but honestly, so much of this nowadays just comes down to strategy and catching the other team by surprise. And if you have a vastly superior level one team and you get caught off guard, it won't matter. But surprisingly enough, with all the aggression we saw in the first two games, both these teams coming up with very, very defensive positions. Absolutely defensive. Just keep in mind eye on what SK Gamer are doing. Very, playing very defensive here. They, I think they're expecting it. Maybe you know they're in the exact position that IG went for as well earlier against the Zubu Frost. And I think the Zubu Frost are going to push for that one. Of course, the blue team. They would have a Corky to Valkyrie over in a brush, and that would not be a good brush to Valk <laughs> into right now. It would not be the wisest choice. He has actually leveled up Phosphorus Bomb already. So uh, no, no craziness from Woong this time around. Just seeing where Cloud Templar's gonna go. Is he gonna go across for that red buff? It's looking like they might well think about it, you know. They could I think they're gonna go try to invade. This is something that teams have been getting better and better at. Instead of invading right away and blowing all your cards, they go in late. This is something blue team always goes for double golems with Sona and Caitlyn. They're gonna maybe try to disrupt this with four, but they step yeah. on a Caitlyn trap. Straight onto that trap. Asking Rick, SK Gaming are gonna be completely aware of where they are. They've got to be careful though. Kevin is on his own at the raid. So Kevin taking the large wraith away from the fact. Cloud Temple now gonna come in, gonna spot him, but he's already taken the large wraith. That's the only thing that Zubu Frost were really aiming for there. They were gunning for that. Blue buff, meanwhile, will be given across to Aranea. So Aranea is gonna be happy with that one. Shy returns to top lane. Disrupt this. Yeah, in that red buff, they can see they're continuing to disrupt. Their ward goes down. Can they get it? They do manage to get the steal. It was Cloud Temple that picked it up, so they have managed to steal that red buff. So, and also going over to the side, RNA picking up that blue buff, but his red was stolen, and now he's going into his own side of the jungle. So, Azubu Frost has a potential to clear three of the four buffs here, which would give them an early game experience and gold advantage. Okay, so it's looking like we're going to have some standard lane play coming here, Jan. Let's just take us through exactly how these are going to stack up. We talked about Kevin versus Shy earlier on. So Kevin versus Shy right now, Aurelia might be able to jump on a bit early, but the problem with this is Kevin spent time trying to defend the red, so Shy got early experience. Now he has a slight edge on Aurelia and might actually be able to bully that lane. You go across in the mid, you have Ocelot and RNA. Or sorry, you have Ocelot against Rapid Star. And that is where he has to be fearful of RNA's ganks because he has an advantage on Karthus, but not if the Alistair ganks come. And then you swoop down into the bottom lane, and this is the poke heavy comp by SK, trying to punish the support Lux. Support Lux is all about pick kills if you land a Q and team fighting, not necessarily about landing in poke. So SK is going to try to jump on top of that no sustain lane. So meanwhile, down the bottom, you can see the shove coming from Yellow Star. They're forcing. Goon back to that tower. Kind of expected. I mean, Caitlyn with that Piltover Peacemaker will be a bit of a force to be reckoned with, certainly in the early few levels. You can see he's level 3 versus level 1 already. That's a big advantage. And that's just the fact that they've been able to push them back. They spent Azubu Frost a lot of time in that red jungle. They also missed a few early minions, which is what's contributing to this early XP advantage. They should be able to get some of these creeps on the tower, but you can even see they're far behind their tower and still getting a fair bit of poke damage from Sona. It's going to be a very difficult lane early on for Wooman Man. Let's see how that one's going to progress through Yellow Stars. You can see he's aiming up, trying to get that pilt over across both members of Zubu Frost. Meanwhile, that top lane, we can see Aranea is in position to possibly go for something on Shy here. I'm going to try and keep my eye 
on both lanes. He is going to sit this one out. We saw earlier on, actually, IG sat in that bush for a full minute waiting to try and get that gang. Kevin is trying to bait Shy in there, but I don't think he's going to fall for this one. It's rather clever. He placed that ward in the brush, trying to make sure he had, you know, trick him into having vision. Gets the ghost to be blown, but that's all they're going to do. He might go back to that brush and camp, but nope, he's just going to walk right away. Still a successful gank, despite not touching it. Yeah, absolutely forcing that summoner spell to be used there. So, Arane returns. Let's see if he's got anything to go for. Rapid Star is pretty much pushed against his tower. He's going to try and see if he can steal the race. Puts the ward down. Going to check out that red buff, maybe. But maybe, may just go back towards Shy up that top lane. Golems are available to him, as it is at the moment. Cloud Templar just taking the wolves, so he's a long way off. They have good positioning here at SK early on. You can see Shy continue to be harassed, and that bottom lane still very much a level advantage for Yellowstar. He actually steals the blue Wraith there, but gets spotted out by Cloud Templar. And they've done a really good shop, job shutting down RNA and making sure his ganks don't dictate any lanes. The red buff steal was a big part of that. They kept his XP down, they kept his threat down, and now he's heading back up against top. But Shy's so close to his tower, this would be a very difficult gank to execute. Yeah, we've also got Cloud Templar on the way up the river as well. So this is a dangerous, dangerous game that RNA is playing. He's going to take three tower hits there. Less than ideal. Mm. And you can see immediately that Cloud Templar's like, yeah, I think we could have a go at this one. He's double buffed up. He just needs to get that thorns across on towards RNA. Good stun from Kevin there, defending his jungler. And immediately turns that attention down there. You can see that the Rapid Star was making his way up the river. So wise play from SK Gaming. Very cagey stuff here from both teams. Actually, a lot of caution coming out from both of these guys. It's really just on Azubu Frost to stall and wait for Alistair to no longer be effective. So all of this posturing is coming out in favor of them quite strongly. Once Rapid Star hits level 6, the wave is just going to be cleared by the Anivia Ultimate. Especially the Cloud Templar is an energy-based jungler, so the mana and the blue buff getting handed to Rapid Star is not going to set him back one bit. Can't say the same for SK with Ocelot and Arane because Karthus is going to demand that blue buff and Alistair's not going to have it. Yeah, Yellowstar in that bottom lane, he's got to be careful. He's playing it very aggressively, just has one minion. He's got to be careful he didn't get caught by that light binding from Mad Life. He easily could get pushed on just a couple of shots from that tower. would definitely be very harmful to him at the moment. A flip coming out on that top lane. Kevin versus Shy. Kevin puts the stun down, but Shy hits level 6 before Kevin, which means he did return it's gonna to be pretty big. on. He's he now just going to shove that lane entirely into the tower, and he would actually have the potential to even run behind the tower temporarily until Kevin hits level 6. Yenistar on his own down the bottom, he has been caught by the line binding down the bottom there, he will get the damage down, he should be able to back off from this one, trying to be aggressive on towards Madlife and just tank through that damage, hasn't really got it to face against Gun Wung and he's going to have Nif rejoining him in that bottom lane, but he has taken a lot of damage, I expect to see Yenistar go back at some point, however he's only just used his first health bar. RNA is just not able to put any pressure on this game. We just saw Sh uh, Shy hit level 6 on Singe and just go behind the tower and clear a wave. That's not a good lane for Kevin right now. He's getting, despite being even on minion kills, he should have been ahead of Singe early on at this point. Even bottom lane though, it's coming around a bit to the other side. Once Azubu Frost hits level 6 is when the threat's going to come on for them, but SK doing a really good job poking him down. 46 minion kills for Caitlyn, only 28 for Corky. Doing a really good job out poking them early, Demon. Yeah, very even on the top lane as well. We've just seen uh, Shy going back. Actually, it looks like he's going to go to a, towards the Hex to Revolver rather than going straight towards a Catalyst to protect a definitely a different start from a Singe player. Interesting choice there. The Hex Tech Revolver is just going to allow him to lane and sustain more and more, which would make sense since he does not have Teleport. A lot of Singes do that. That just means all he wants to do is sit in that lane. All he wants to do is just push past the tower and create as much 4v5 pressure for his team as possible. Spellvamp is one of the ways to do that, and when the team fight phase does come out, if he gets a will, the ancient will help. And here comes RNA. Very much coming in there. I think the ghost is going to be available. There's the ulti popped RNA, and he's got to be careful. He's very low on health. Shy nearly finished him off. Couldn't quite get the flip down on him, and instead, Kevin's going to have to back away from that one. So, from a two on one situation, Shy continues to just trot on past that lane and continue his farming merry way. Meanwhile, in the middle there, you can see that our Ocelot was also being pushed out a little bit by Rapid Star. So we've got to be careful, but this is all buying time for Cloud Templar to get back into that jungle, go for the invade, and steal away the red buff. And Shy is going to be trouble for SK because they just sent two people up there and had to run away. He went in encounter jungle. He is beasting right now. There is not much bottom SK can lane. do against him unless they have three. And here comes a potential big fight bottom lane. Cloud Templar sneaking all the way behind SK. This could be first blood. He's just taken the red buff. He's surely going to get on towards Nif there. He's had to flash away straight away. The light binding catching on towards Yellowstar. The damage is going to continue on to him or towards him. 
And Cloud Temple looks like he's just going to back away from this one. But Azubu Frost kind of winning out that farm in session. We saw the Wolves already been taken away by Shy there. He's been very aggressive. Like you say, he just went straight past it. He's like, yeah, you're going to try and gang me. I don't mind. I can pop my ulti and continue farming my merry way. 73 CS to 67. So not that much of a big advantage right now. Aaron I did go for the boots of mobility early on. And they're just not walking out for him yet. He's really quite far behind at this point. Still hasn't hit level 6. Not going for any GP10 items early, but still not pulling off successful ganks. When you go Boots Mobility, you're all about getting the ganks. He realizes his red's been stolen once again. And this is going to be trouble for Alistair as this moves on because he's actually too weak to assist meaningfully in a lot of these ganks right now. He has to find a way to get himself back into this game. Yeah, Cloud Templar almost a full level ahead of RNA now. He's just about to hit seven while RNA is only just about to pick up six. Rapid Star, meanwhile, going and getting them wards down. Look towards that top lane. Now is Shy working out towards Kevin. Shy has been back, got himself out. Next to Gunblade. And he has actually just popped his ulti there on Kevin. He's just using it to farm, so he's not even really worried about the fact that he could get ganked. He's just quite happy to pop it and just continue his farming his way. Kevin definitely starting to struggle up here. It's on a 90 second cooldown, and he has all that spell vamp. He's just bought free farming, and bottom lane has the Alistair camping. Trying to bait Azubu Frost in and getting aggressive, but they don't seem to be falling for it. Yeah, Aaron here is sat there. He's gonna have to back away and again look at Shy. Shy is in the jungle. He's taken away actually the siege minion. Uh, and he's just looking for the wolves. The wolves were not there, but he'd quite happily taken them. And we are seeing Cloud Templar begin in the dragon. They have so much pressure here. The thing is though, Kevin has his teleport up, has not been harassed by Kevin, he's just getting pressured. So they have complete control. Actually, sorry. SK could turn this around if they had a ward, but they actually don't have vision on the Zuzu Frost right now. They have no idea this is happening. I'm guessing they, they realize that people are missing from it. Aaron Ayer is heading down there. May even get caught out here. Just puts the ward down. Rapid Star could have stunned him there. Possibly the rest of the team could have followed through, but first dragon of the game on 11 minutes, just going straight towards him and shy once again, almost playing Dyrus style. Remember, they've never seen Dyrus doing the exact same thing. I guess you could say Darian as well from Moscow 5, pretty much taking everything away from that jungle, and it's just all snowballing against Aranea. Aranea has fallen behind, and Ocelot now, the ping goes down. Ocelot wants to go for this one. He's going to have the help from Kevin at the moment. Can he close that distance? No, he can't. And Shy just walks away again. Singed is causing himself problems. Even though Shy is even in minions pretty much with Kevin, the pressure he's applying on the map is putting RNA very far behind. So he's actually disrupting RNA and Ocelot and all of SK just by being where he is at these times. Really, really solid Singed play by Shy, and that's a great counter pick to Aurelia just by the way he's playing it and how he's been able to take advantage. Yeah, the saving grace right now is Yellow Star down this bottom lane. 93 CS compared to 65 for Gunwung, but we know that Gunwung will certainly come into a late game. He was bullied out of that lane against by IG earlier on today, and he still managed to get himself involved. And it's like, you to put the pressure on me, the rest of my team will carry the load. And as it is right now, Shy is definitely going to become a problem late on. Question is how much they could deal with that harass if he was to get involved, which it looks like they're going to try to gank him again. We can see how the again. Ping goes Here down. They are going to target on towards him. There's the head, but hasn't used the full bridge yet. There's the full bridge going down. The tower getting dropped as well, which means there will not be any tower damage coming down here. Shy is going to surely try and walk away from this. The card assault is not going to be enough. We are down the bottom lane. They're also going down the bottom lane. Nif should go down. First look comes down. It will be good one that picks it up. Good one goes down as well to Yellow Star. You can see Mad Life going to get caught out. Yellow Star's not got enough in him. Shen should be able to get the taunt. Just flashes out of it. There's the teleport from Kevin. Can he get on towards Mad Life? Mad Life will surely go down. Yes, he will. Yellow Star picks it up. Two on one exchange. Kevin wants to get on towards Cloud Templar. Cloud Templar should be able to get away from this one. What a crazy, crazy exchange in that bottom lane. Flurry of action. The Ocelot Ultimate actually assisting attempting to assist two places. They could not get shy, but the bottom lane fight pretty much just collapsed everyone. That was one of those try to appear everywhere fights, and it's pretty much what happened in the bottom lane. They had a three on three that went on, and they traded kills actually just two for one. So something SK had to do because they are getting out farm, they are getting out pressure, they have to start getting kills because if they continue this farming game, things aren't gonna work out. Yeah, meanwhile, well, the also Sally is pretty much gone, so there's absolutely nothing left of that one, so it should be two towers for Azubu Frost next time they push on the way. Meanwhile, the bottom tower of Azubu Frost is also very low, so Yellow Star's been pushing heavily on there, so it's working out both ways at the moment. There's Shy, though, is definitely point. farming up so well against Kevin at the moment. Kevin will become beastly. You can see he built that with wits and to try and sort of counteract what Shy is doing, but Shy, honestly, if now he's got that catalyst in now, expect the Rod of Ages to come out shortly. It's just so, so strong. He's got a bit of wind coming in here, Hell actually. Yeah. Shy 
just continuing the pressure. And look how much he's sucking RNA into that lane. RNA's not been able to do anything to Shy right now. And just that took the pressure from mid. Arne would have been able to maybe hold that mid tower, but because he got pulled over there by Shy, they're just pressuring everywhere here. That's two towers to zero and the dragon. So global gold wise, they're actually up by quite a lot. Yeah, as it is, I'm going to keep my feet on that bottom. Oh, the wind. I mean, the LA wind. Who'd have thought that? The LA wind picks up a little bit. But uh, Kevin, Shy, Kevin's just keep. I think he really can really do a great deal of it. Meanwhile, Rapid Star in the middle there is pushing Ocelot back. Arne was there try and go for it. As yet, they've not even popped the rebirth once on Rapid Start. Definitely having problems down that bottom lane. Yellow Star certainly going to hopefully be the saving grace for SK Gaming. He has got that BF Sword already. And looking towards where's Rapid Start going. Arane is going to come around the oh back no. side of him. Also, lot may get caught out here. Has to flash away. Oh, what a great wall! But he's managed to dodge away from the Crystal Ball. Surely will get taken down. Yes, he will. And that is Rapid Star picking up the kill. Arane was there, but Kevin had already been bullied out of the lane, so he was unable to help out there. And Ocelot drops and there's not a lot he could do about it. I'm going to keep harping on this because what Shy is doing is absolutely winning in the game right now. That created the kill on Ocelot. They couldn't stop him with two, so they sent a third, and with that, Rapid Star was able to cut him off. And Arnie having to burn his ultimate to save his oracles there. Rapid Star pressuring mid lane almost as hard as Shy is pressuring top. They're not necessarily needing the team fight, they just have so much pressure on the lanes right now, and it's absolutely handcuffing SK. Yeah, meanwhile, you can see that, well, that red buff has been taken away for the third time by Cloud Temple. He's now absolutely controlling that jungle. Meanwhile, Kevin goes back towards Shy. Can he manage to fight him this time? But Shy at half hit points. I'm not sure if Kevin can even manage to match him this time. The uh, ultimate has been running. Is it going to be enough? Does manage to get in there. Should Look be able to get the stun down on him, but it's still, you can see. And here comes the Shen ultimate now, going to be coming in. They're surely going to turn the tables on towards Kevin. The flip will come down. There's Ocelot's ultimate. It's not going to be enough. They're trying to pick up the, the kill on Shen, and then it's not going to happen. Here comes Rapid Star. Surely going to pick it up. There we go. Rapid Star finishes off and puts the wall at our eye and says, get the hell away from me. Unreal coordination by Azubu Frost right now. The aggressive turnaround on the fight there by Shy. Kevin thought he might have a chance to kill Singe. Nope, Shen was there. So was that desperation moves from Kevin? Was he feeling, oh, I can get this one? He had no help anywhere near him. He just went for it. And you know, he should have realized that the Shen ultimate will be available. Ocelot uh, is, was, you know, struggling well, so heavily they get mid. Moved. Meanwhile, Dana, but yes, see Gunwung in trouble. He should go down. He's trying to do as much damage as he can. So Yellowstar will go down. Of course, the Shen ultimate was just used on that top lane. Can SK turn this into anything? You can see Nif and Ocelot getting aggressive here. The dragon will be due in another minute. I believe it. No, it's due now. I was going to say it was on 11 minutes. It is due right now. And SK should be able to take this one away. Remember, Shy has no teleport. He can't get involved. Cloud Templar has no ultimate. They are not anywhere near this one. So SK gaming trying to save a little bit of gold there and they are still 5k behind yes the looks trying to get the steal just at the end wasn't quite enough my life trying to get in there that was really the first lapse of judgment by azubu frost in this entire game womb getting caught out in the bottom lane there completely enabled the dragon you could tell sk was trying to turn that around they actually had four people down in the bottom lane early hoping to get something like killing womb which they were able to to get the dragon the first lapse in pressure really that has happened the entire game the Zubu Frost continuing the pressure though, Shy popping his ultimate once again. RNA's down there, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do anything. But well, he's got the tower damage. He's had about three or four tower hits this time. It should be enough. They managed to keep him stunned there for quite a while. But you can see Rapid Star coming Everyone across. Everyone chasing him down. There's a beautiful wall across. Kevin now split. And Kevin's got to be careful. Tables are going to get turned. He's going to get stunned down. Rapid Star picks up the kill again. And Kevin is dropped one more time. The synergy between Rapid Star and Shy has created so much for them right now. Applying the pressure, Rapid Star comes over and just finishes people off as they try to collapse. That was technically a 2v4, and they came away with a kill. Absolutely, and you know, that tower hit Shy probably about four or five times in there. They managed to keep the stun control on him, but it's just not enough. He's managed to get that tanky stun to become troll mode, and it is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Meanwhile, Gunwung is starting to catch up on that farm. You can see it's 155 to 119, but a 3-0. Yellow Star is still the saving, only for really saving grace for SK Gaming right now because Ocelot has struggled out in their mid lane. You know, I'm not convinced by an Ocelot pick on Karthus. It's just not one of the champions I'm used to seeing him on. 
He is getting a little bit pushed around. He's getting outrun by Rapid Star, but here we come. Arne actually getting the catch on to Rapid Star. That's not a good exchange. You can see Arne is going to get caught out straight away. They were from a four on two. Ocelot's going to get caught out in this one. He gets exhausted. Cloud Templar continues on to pass him. Cloud Templar now might be in trouble. He does take down Ocelot. Cloud Templar should get dropped. He's got an Oracle on him. He needs to try and save it. There's the Crescendo coming across. Kevin picks up the kill. Now he's going to try and chase Rapid Star. Rapid Star still has Rebirth available though, so he doesn't want to go for it. And Shy joins the fight. He's going to have to back away. You can see that Caitlyn trying to keep him back there. Net shots across and just backs away from that fight. A one-on-one -on -one exchange, a two-on-one, -on -one, sorry, exchange there. As Arane and Ocelot, the initiators, get taken out. And you said that one of the only saving graces for SK was Yellowstar. And that is so true because early in the game, we, sh we showed how Sin doesn't necessarily care about AP damage heroes, but a really fed 80 carry late game can actually take down Singe. So if Yellowstar can keep it up, keep getting kills, keep getting his farm, he might be the thing that could finally take down the monster that is Shy right now. They need him to get going, and really, right now, nothing can touch Shy. They need to get a lot more farm on Yellowstar before they can even hope to win. Yeah, now what's going on here, I mean, SK Gaming are trying to farm this one out as long as possible. They want the late game. They know it really is going to get stronger. Carthus seems to be getting stronger. Obviously, will get stronger. It becomes a hyper carry. Yellow Star is going to get stronger, so they are not pushing for the 5v5 fights yet. They're really not, but even if they wanted to push for the 5v5 fights right now, they probably couldn't just because mm -hmm. they have no one to deal with Shy. They need to put two or three members on his side, and Azubu Frost is not going to just group up with him and allow the 5v5 fights to happen. Either way, Azubu Frost doesn't necessarily have a bad late game, it's just they're much stronger right now than SK, so SK has to stall regardless of team comps. Overall, the team comps are fairly fairly balanced when you look towards late game. So as it is at the moment, seeing Rapid Star who has picked up his 4 0 one got that theme's holy an early grail early on, and walls off Aaron A here. Aaron A may be in trouble, the Shy comes around, doesn't manage to get the flip on him though, and there's a good wall though, Pain there, mentioned to keep him away from that tower, the stun's gonna come around, Nip's gonna be a little bit careful, Take another burst of damage from Rapid Star, but Zubu Frost had to back away there. Shy came in a little bit cocksure of themselves, and they just weren't able to back it up. So Aaron Air tanking out that damage. That's going to be a good sign for them. That's the first time they've been able to tank that initial burst. This is a 6,000 gold advantage, though, coming out for Zubu Frost. The last dragon was given up, but soon they're actually going to be able to posture around Baron or just continue the split push pressure. They've done such a good job controlling. They also have the first Aegis of the Legion coming out of this game to, Cl to Cloud Templar. So if they do want to start forcing those 5v5s, they would have the small advantage on there right now. They're ahead of them in many, many ways. But they are allowing Yellow Star and Kevin to continue farming. They've both stayed in top and bottom lane while all that was going on in mid. They just stayed around there. Shy has been taking all the jungle and then see the pings going around. Madlife spotted it. Madlife with the Oracle should be able to take that uh, ward down. He's just making sure he doesn't get ward baited. And has to back away. Now I've seen SK starting to gather in the mid lane. Yellow Star realize that inner turret is dangerously low. As it is, 3-0 in turret, still no turret for SK Game. Despite the fact that top bottom turret was taken exceedingly low by Yellow Star early on, he chose not to take it. He had the opportunity and instead continued to farm. He was happy to farm it. Meanwhile, down the bottom there, Cloud Templar continues the pressure. And this, is what, this is what the Korean teams do. They will go for those turrets. If they're available, they'll take them. And this is also why they pick Shen, because his split pushing presence is so high. They're going to have Shy up top on Singe. Cloud Templar on bottom on Chen, and then potentially three people pushing mid. And SK is just so stretched that they won't really know where to engage. They have to try to force something. Yellow Star trying to fly through on a Rapid Star. This might get turned around on. Yeah, my well doing. There's going to be lots of money to get the ulti cross. Crescendo went across, but it was a bad goal because it only hit Shy. Cloud Templar alters himself in there. You can see the damage going down on Nip. Nip should drop down here. Cloud Templar picks up the kill on that one. Kevin and Ocelot trying to dive in. Ocelot trying to do as much as he can. Should be Rapid Star, but he's got Rebirth available. That's going to be the ultimate from Carthus. But no, he managed to block it off. How on earth did he manage to survive Magis through that Bale one? Magic right Bail just at the right time. Shy picks up the kill on Aaron Air, and Azubu Frost should walk straight through and pick up this inhibitor. You can see that Kevin is the only one available. Is he going to try and suicide himself on there? Rapid Star has got that egg available. It would be crazy to go for it. Just trying to use that ulti to try and pop him as much as possible. But there goes the tower. There goes the inhibitor. And Azubu Frost looking strong now. 10-4 up. A 9k gold advantage. Just the combination of so much pressure they'd applied early the game. They had a big gold advantage. They had the team feed items. And there was no way they were killing Shy, especially when Cloud Templar came into the fight on his back. Now the only fear they have to worry about for now is SK trying a Desperation Baron, getting some picks. But if they actually start staying together or keep only Shen away from the team, there's 
very difficult roads ahead for SK because they can't win 5v5s and they're having trouble getting split up. So they pretty much have the Desperation Baron play ready to go if they if they need it. Yeah, they have to go for it right now and it's not going to happen because Yellowstar is down that bottom of the map. He was looking for the red buff, it's not available. Instead, SK are going to try and ward this one out. They realize they don't have the timing on it. That's why Azubu Frost backed straight up as soon as they took that initiate. Little inhibitor, and as it is, Crowd Templar is just going to pick up another red buff. So as it is at the moment, Azubu Frost, correct me if I'm wrong, I've taken every single red buff of the game. They've taken, every, you're absolutely correct, they've taken absolutely every red buff of SK. The only objective they've given up is that one lone dragon when Wound got caught in the bottom. They've yet to give up a tower, they've taken five themselves. Really systematic domination of SK so far in this game, just taking them out of the match. Yeah, and that big advantage that Wung had, uh, uh, that Yellowstar had over Wung, is slipping away as well, because Wung's quite happily picking up the free farm. You know, they've got the control of the map. Yellowstar's desperately trying to keep things at bay here. To fight off those super minions. They're going to try to go for Shy again, but honestly, this double combo of Aaron Aya and Kevin, they just do not have the damage to deal with Shy there. The headbutt pulled for his combo came out, and he just did nothing. He just ignored it, and this could be why they just allowed Alistair to get through to SK, because they knew they'd be able to take Tanky enough laners and just out pressure oh Alistair. They had a plan for this and it's worked oh out quite well. Yeah, that plan looks like it might backfire. It looks like Zubu Frost are going to die from the turret. They wisely backed away from that one. As it is, you can see the split push once again. And look at this. Shen is in the bottom, the bottom lane. They're going to poke around Baron. If SK comes to fight, they're going to peel off Baron and fight them. If they decide to just poke around, then Shen's going to get this bottom tower. SK essentially has to go headlong into a 5v5, which they're most likely going to lose or just give up the game. It is. Light bind is going to go across. It does catch on towards Nif. They will have seen that. Are they going to try and sneak around the back side of them? Zubu Frost will stall as long as they want because Cloud Templar is unstoppable in the bottom lane right here until they send some opposition. Kevin's teleports down, so they can't even send him down to teleport back up. It's either force a 4v5, give up towers, or give up bear. Looks like they're going to have to give up that bottom tower. They know they can do nothing about it. Kevin was motoring his way down there. They don't want to lose that second inhibitor. As it is, Zipu Frost are in such a strong position. Yellow Star's got to be careful. That's a double light binding catching on towards the AD carry. They could drop him very quickly. Aaron Ayers get caught out. He's had to flash away from that wall. And now he's down to half health. He's going to have to back off towards the turret. This may well be prime time for Azubu Frost to pick up that Baron. They realize they've done the damage. They realize that Aaron Ayer has the jungler with that smite. And there we go. Oh, Ocelot oh, just walked nice. straight into a light mine. He dropped in second. Aaron Ayer now getting caught out as well. Are they going to finish it off? Crescendo comes across with a double kill from Mad Life. Picks it up. Very nicely done. And that is going to be a Baron. Thank you very much, Azubu Frost. Here's the support Lux kicking in for you. He lands a light binding and finishes them off with the ultimate as well, giving them the Baron. Wow, Cloud Templar didn't even have to use his ultimate to join the team. So once again, just systematic destruction of SK's strategy. And they're potentially demoralizing them with this victory, just taking everything from them and giving them almost nothing. Absolutely. We talked about how much the moral high ground is used for SK Gaming. They really do get themselves G'd up for this one. You know, with CLG Prime coming up after this, it's a desperate, dangerous situation for SK Gaming. As it is, though, Azubu Frost just so, so strong right now. Who is going to be able to stop them? IG tried. They had a damn good go of it. It didn't work out for them. SK Gaming are being rolled by them right now. This is a display of domination so far by Zubu Frost as they pick up the dragon. They had the one hiccup in the lane, which was let's survive the Caitlyn Sona lane so we can get support Lux and Corky into the game. They did that just fine. Their other two lanes were absolutely crushing. Cloud Templar didn't even need to gank on Shen. He just farmed up to get to the point where they can split push. Everyone took care of themselves, and overall their team strategy was just so, so strong. Yeah, no, I, honestly, I feel that SK Gaming got the team they wanted out of this fight. The, the, you know, the, the picks and bounds, I think, went well for them. Uh, we talked about in the IG game, how Azubu Frost, we felt, got given everything. Yeah. But IG knew better than we did. I mean, they knew to take away that look. So look seems to be working very well for Mad Life. You know, they took away uh, Alistair from him, or they tried to in this game. But he pulled out that looks. And well, 2-1-7 right now as a support, not a bad score. 4 0 6 for a uh, rapid start in that mid lane. You know, Gun Wung has been focused so heavily with that Ezreal fan, but he just switches to Corky and carries on regardless. He just carries on. They're pushing in for the inhibitor here. You can see some elixirs coming up from SK. They're trying very much for a last stand. Yellowstar with that green elixir. So far behind, though, they don't even want to fight despite not having Shen there. He could always just alt in. They're going to try to systematically now, as they have the entire game, just take out 
one inhib after the other and just push in for a victory. Got so much crowd control, of course, that wall just blocking them off. If anyone gets caught out, if Yellen Star or Oslo pokes their head out too far, that light binding or again the stun from Rapid Star just being poked out there. That's what's happened at the start of every fight. Again, like I say, they've still not had a chance to have a full-on 5v5 because Kevin is being kept busy. First it was shy, now it's Cloud Templar. They're just having so many problems. And Zubin Frost starting to push in on towards this one. You can see Rapid Star getting there. Shy goes aggressive. Sniff gets dropped instantly by Gunwung there, and Yellowstar is trying desperately to back away, but Shai is causing himself in all between sorts the towers. of problems, just running through the turret. Exhausted, it doesn't matter. Flips Yellowstar just before we can get out towards the fountain. Yellowstar gets dropped finally, and then hold of SK Gaming forced to back away from the fountain. The Nexus turrets are going to go down, and Zubu Frost should take this one. It will be 2 0 as Zubu Frost. They are looking shoe in for the quarterfinals, and honestly, they are looking like one of the number one teams right now. Quite a display there by Azubu Frost, especially hands down in that game, MVP is shy on Singe. That is some of the best Singe play I have ever seen in tournaments. He knew exactly when he needed to push down. He never died that entire game, Des despite spending the entire match in SK territory. He drew RNA away from everything. He shut him down. He was the one who disrupted Jungle Alistair more than anyone else. And he just completely schooled them right there. That's it. I mean, Aaron Air focused on that top lane. We did. We barely saw him go down that bottom one against Goo Woo. It was always at the top. He needed to help Kevin out. Kevin, a very, very good Aurelia player, mm -hmm. struggled so heavily against Shy there on Singed. You know, it's not simply a case of he just wasn't used to playing Singed because coming into this game, we've done our research. I was not expecting Singed in that top lane. That's something that Azubu Frost hadn't pulled out really in the OGN. They were doing different top lanes that entire time. That's just what they had ready for Aurelia because they knew maybe just out research SK or out bought them or anything because, you know, Kevin's a great player in a lot of ways, top lane. Indeed. He got destroyed by Shion Singe there. Yeah, we saw some excellent, I think it was 2v1 or 3v1 play at the EU regionals where he was just dancing around with Aurelia, mm -hmm. but this time it was not to be. And honestly, Yellow Star 3 2 1 at the end there. He just couldn't get the damage. You saw him get the Bloodthirster early on. He wanted to get the Infinity Edge. Had to change it. Needed the Lifesteal. Needed the Phantom Dancer in there. And he was the only saving grace. He was 3-0-1 at one point. Mm -hmm. Ended 3-2-1. Just could not get going SK Gaming. So much of that was just a really good dive buddy comp they had there. The Singe would run in and Shen would be right on his back. They were so far ahead and trying to dive in. They'd just double up on Yellowstar. And even though he had the Bloodthirster Phantom Dancer, he's not taking down those two guys in time. Yeah, so let's have a look at the tables and see how this one works out. Obviously, Azubu Frost now looking incredibly strong. 2-0 already. IG and SK Gaming out the way. CLG, NA left to play. IG, on the other hand, 1-1. One, one. And now, you know, going into the next match, they're going to be against CLG. And SK, CLG now is everything. Everything on the line. Both 0-1 going into that match. It's going to be pretty damn crazy. Uh, but let's have a look at the highlights for this uh, game. I mean... Honestly, what, what would you call a highlight in there? Because Azubu Frost was just all over them the whole way through. So much of this was just split pushing and pressure. It was just showing you you don't actually need to group up and team fight. You don't necessarily need all the AoEs. You can just run through and pressure with Singed the entire time. Okay, so we're going to check out one of the player audio replays. This is something we've got going on. I'm really sure cool. of you guys have seen this already, but it is pretty cool. Let's have a look. Damn. Holy shit. <laughs> it's SK. <laughs> little blooper in there, I Oops. believe. <laughs> <That happened. laughs> um, I think it's safe to say they were kind of caught by surprise there. They weren't expecting that much coordination from Mizubu Frost or just that much preparation. Overall, the support Lux is something that they thought they had the counter for, and in a lot of ways they did in team fight phase, is just, or sorry, in the laning phase, because yeah. they outlaned them quite strongly. Outside from that, though, across the rest of the map, SK kind of just got obliterated. Absolutely obliterated. Yeah. You know, top lane was obliterated. Mid lane, we didn't really get to look at it too much, but Rapid Star clearly came out on top. 4-0-6, I think it was, by the end of the game. He was just so, 4 0 8, in fact, by the end of the mm -hmm. game. He was just so strong. Ocelot just didn't seem to get going. It's one of the keys to the game we talked about earlier. He needed to get him going because RNA was just kept so busy, he had no free time. Yeah, they didn't get Ocelot going. RNA got disrupted. 
they didn't take the game to MIG, M or sorry, uh, blah, 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 Azubu. <laughs> they fixed their names around. Sorry about that. Easy for you to say. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, how will this affect SK Gaming? It's going to be SK Gaming versus CLG North America. That will be up just right after this break. <laughs> 